All right, welcome to my first test of uh, clay from Chavant and uh, Mono Melt Soft Clay, Mono Melt Hard Clay, and here's medium. Let's do the soft first. Take my clay cutter and cut down through. Oh, this cuts easy. And the reason I cut my clay is because it makes it easier to handle the stickiness of the clay. Clay has to stick to the other clay and blend in nicely and it doesn't want to pull away from the clay that's good it definitely has a plastique flavor to it or a feel to it rolls nicely my my opinion just offhand without ever having used this clay. And this is the uh, Manu Melt, M O N U dash Melt Soft from Shabbat. Is that it's uh, a good clay. It has uh, all the qualities that you want if you're sculpting. I'm going to run it through my pasta machine and see how it goes through. Uh, if it comes out bubbly or whatever just and, and this is without light or any kind of uh, heat to soften it up and it's it's really nice in the hand let's try this I use a pasta machine all the time so that's the reason why I'm even testing this through that comes through nicely. No bubbles at all. Very consistent. Oh, that's nice. All right, I out of uh, five thumbs up, I give this a good Four and a half thumbs. That's wonderful. That's the clay. Manu Melt Soft. Alright, I got the clay about six inches from the uh, 100 watt light bulb. And uh, I'm going to check it in about a minute. Alright, it's been a minute. And it has gotten a little bit softer and it feels pretty darn good I mean this is a soft clay and it's 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 not overly soft is what I'm trying to say hmm I like this I like this clay okay this is the medium clay here this uh, clay uh, it's a non-sulfuric clay, which is good because it doesn't, non-sulfur clay uh, doesn't smell. It has a clay smell. It's not strong. But uh, the thing about uh, non-sulfur clays is that you can leave them out for years and they won't develop a skin. Um, I used to get Roma clay when I was a kid, uh, sculpting back in the 60s. And it would develop a skin, uh, kind of a flaky surface that was hard to uh, get through after it had been sitting for a long period of time. And non-sulfur clay will not develop that kind of skin. And uh, will basically be sculptable 
for years to come. Now this is the uh, medium clay. At first a little more crumbly clay than the soft clay. My feeling about it, it's good. It's a little harder to work with because it's medium than the soft. But if you want to uh, work with something that has a little more hardness to it so that it holds detail better, uh, medium clay is the way to go. I put a bunch, uh, some of it underneath the light for a minute. Chavant says the mono melt brings all the qualities of a clayette, a sulfur free, non hardening, tack free, odor free, and flexible clay into a formula that can be melted and applied to a CNC foam armature by brush. In other words, you can melt this clay and then take a brush in the uh, melted clay and then just brush it onto your foam armature, uh, such as that you could get from uh, true form armatures. And it will build a surface that you can stick clay onto uh, so you don't have clay lifting off of the uh, foam. The, uh, well, this has been on here just about a minute. Let's see what it feels like. Yeah, that softened it up a little bit. Not quite as crumbly to begin with, and a little, a little more pliable. Um, I like my clays like this. I like the medium more than I do the soft. Uh, medium will harden as it cools, not harden. I mean, it'll just get stiffer. And so, if you put detail into the clay, like a nose, which I'm attempting to make here. Let's see how it blends. Oh, it blends nicely. And uh, now, see, th this is the clay I would probably order. Is this medium uh, because of the uh, the ability that once it cools a little bit, it holds its shape better. Alright, that gets a passing grade. Now, I think the hard clay, which is this clay here, is a clay that you would use more for model building. Uh, if you're building a model car or a Something like that. It's uh, it's not something I would use, but my mind can be changed easily. So let's take a look at it. A lot more crumbly. It still sticks together. You can still blend it in, and it's still not extremely hard. I've I've had hard clay that you couldn't even do this. But, uh, hmm, that's interesting. I'm going to put it under the light for a minute and see what happens. So, let's see, this has been under the light for a minute. That's not bad. You know, I might consider using this kind of clay, too, at some point, if I needed to. Uh, if I was doing a monumental piece, I'd want to use a clay soft uh, more than medium, only because it would spread easier, and you could do uh, bigger areas fast. Uh, the uh, medium, I would do reserve that for uh, sculptures, uh, smaller sculptures. The hard, I don't know if I would use it. Um, I know that uh, they use a hard clay 
in Detroit when they make uh, models of cars because it uh, will, you know, you can form it and keep it in shape uh, without uh, worrying about banging it and having it change. So, a as far as all these clays, uh, these mono clays, I really like them. And uh, I would recommend uh, the medium for smaller bronzes or clays and uh, the soft uh, wouldn't be bad for smaller clays depending on what kind of a, an effect as far as texture and everything goes. Uh, soft would be incredible for doing quick strokes and, and stuff like that and bringing out more of an impressionistic style of work. If you're doing a little more detail like I do, uh, the medium would probably be better. And for the hard, I would, uh, well, it would depend on your taste and on your uh, strength of your hands, basically. All right, that's uh, my review of the Mono Melt and, uh, by Chavant Clay Company, and uh, I'm, I'm liking it.